Hello, dear ones. It's Alice. I'm of the stars. Um, I'd like to talk a little about the woes caused by belief in causality. So, especially the notion that our woes and our missteps and our what they call trespasses are caused by other people. In the reading that I've done, I've found that the notion that what I do is caused by other people is characteristic of the criminal mind and the antisocial personality. And that got me to thinking. That got me to thinking about why why this is so, you know. And the answer is that when we take responsibility, sole responsibility for our actions, then uh, that presupposes that we have equal ability to change our actions. We have free will. So it's very beneficial to us to our freedom to act in the world and to work out our karmas and to liberate our souls to believe that we are the cause of our actions. And in that way we separate ourselves from the energy streams of the criminal mind and the antisocial personality. In addition, the notion that someone else is responsible for our actions leads to all kinds of complications. For instance, if I say, if say I'm the head of a spiritual group, which I'm not, and uh, I say that the reason I have a certain energy pattern is because someone else and someone, one of my students has that, uh, that energy pattern and transferred it to me, right? And so I say to my group, if we get rid of this person, then that energy pattern will be gone. So then the group, in the case of a cult that kills, which you can look up that, that in my blogs, cults that kill, right? So in the case of a very extreme case of like a Charlie Manson cult or something like that, then the leader of the cult says, okay, kill that person. Everything will be okay then because they're the cause of our problems. Should someone in, something happens, there's either an accident through mental suggestion, say a fatal traffic accident, or someone actually, you know, goes out and kills that person, and, and so that, that is gone. But within a week, the energy pattern reasserts itself through, through the person that's like the spiritual guru or like that, like the Charlie Manson guy, right? But for instance, a pattern of psychic rape is happening. Okay, so, so then he says, no, I'm sorry, it wasn't that person, it's someone else, and it goes on again, and another person is sacrificed for the sake of the group. Okay, so this leads to extreme suffering for the people in the group. Now, were he to look at it aright, he would look for that pattern of energy in himself that's causing him to attract the energies of the group to do with psychic rape. For instance, a teacher that frequents sex workers a teach for and has all his life frequented sex workers, what does that mean to his spiritual group? It means that all of the samskaras of all of the johns, of all of the sex workers that he frequents, become a part of the samskaras of the group. And so very naturally there will be a strong energies of deviant sexual behaviors happening in that group. For instance, psychic rape, physical rape, what they call sadomasochism, S and them, there will be problems with, with people, with snuff, with, um, with murdering people for, uh, for a sexual thrill. There will be all kinds of, of problems because the people that he frequents and mixes his uh, energy field with, will have encountered people like that. And thus they would, like catching the flu, they would have those samskaras in their own auras. So if that unusual circumstance were to occur, 
that a, a group was experiencing and transmitting energies of psychic rape um, to, to, and then broadcasting them in the newosphere, then I would ask that teacher to look at his own behavior. Look at his own behavior, purify and sanctify that which he is, and then the energy of the group will be changed and uplifted. If he has in his group sex workers, he can expect for the energy of the group to express that profession. If he has in his group con artists, he can expect for the energy of the group to include the samskaras that people um, accumulate when they find themselves in prison. And these are many and very deep and heavy samskaras. So, so think about who you're associating with, please. If you're a member of such a group, why not step out and, and breathe the wholesome natural air of the, of the mountains or the seashore or the desert, you know, and forget about groups for now because it's only by being with God and God alone that, that we will purify and sanctify and uplift our own energy fields right now at this time of glorious renewal and awakening. Check out the sun, absolutely glorious.